and with the late great Daphne. Yeah, no. So that was my first time in any kind wow. of hardcore match. Yeah. So it was like sink or swim, kid. Go do your thing. But when you're in the match with someone like Raven and Abyss, who that was really like, you know, that that was what their careers were based on. We had these pretty incredible mentors to help uh, guide what would make a good match. And, uh, you know, Daphne, she wasn't the most technically sound wrestler, uh, but she always wanted to go out there and, you know, work and put out the best match within her capabilities. So uh, she knew like my execution of things would always be crisp and she was, you know, so game to do everything. Like, you know, it's, she really, she always put it out there. And, uh, you know, between the two of us, we had this great idea. I had to eventually go through the table uh, on DAF and I thought, okay, well, the guys are gonna do all these things and no matter what they do, it's gonna be bigger. So we might as well do something pretty big. And I had the brilliant idea of climbing up on the 10 feet, uh, 10 foot speakers and jumping off the speaker onto DAF through a table. And uh, <laughs> you don't realize how high those things are until you actually do it. <laughs> and then you're like, whose idea was this idiot um but no honestly it, it was an amazing opportunity and the one thing I wish I did back then was really take in like what what I was doing what these matches were what they meant how they hadn't been done with other knockouts before but you don't you get so like into it because you're either like burnt out or you're like oh I gotta be on the road for another like 20 days or but uh, yeah, it's it's nice having these kinds of conversations and looking back and realizing, yeah, that you know that was pretty cool and that that was fun and yeah. That's the thing, like uh, when you're in those big time moments. For me, I would always get so much anxiety and stress out over not fucking it up. Yeah. That you don't really appreciate the the moments you're having till afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not like I ever even talked about it. Like Daph and I didn't we didn't talk about it after it wasn't like wow girl that was amazing like we made fucking history yeah. um but I do think in in some regard that may have been not the beginning of the end for her because she'd already been in the business a long time and had her demons that she was always fighting um but I think she started to do more hardcore things overall like you know, on the independence and just like anybody that does that you know your uh, probability of concussions and post concussion syndrome and self-medicating to cope with those things you know yeah. we, we've seen it time and time again it's like the Elvis effect right mm -hmm. um so yeah and you know like I watched her Instagram live like I I had no idea yeah and it's weird because I I never really had watched anybody's live up to that point and I just felt drawn to watch it for whatever reason and uh you know all all of the knockouts were on there like we all ended up on there and being like Daph we love you like I had just talked to her two weeks before I had a voice note still on my phone asking her to do my podcast um but as horrible and morbid as it is, uh, she had been in a lot of pain for a long time, both mentally and physically. And by no, no sense of the word do I say like suicide is an outlet, but knowing her the way I did, at least she's free. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm sad she's not with us. I'm sad that there wasn't anyone around to take her out of that horrible dark place. But when you're in that much pain, like you're in that much suffering, like. Yeah. So she, she really got messed up. Uh, I forget the girl's name, but it was during a match with TNA, right? Like she really got, did she break her neck or something? Were you there part of the company uh, at that time? Yeah. So her and I ended up having like a, a, a like a, a tat. I can't even remember what it was some sort of hardcore match but it wasn't with me because I did put her through tax but they were just tax like they're you know not not a not a big deal but I think it was the I think it was the repetitive nature of her having those matches time and time again and like I said she I think she had taken some really bad bumps earlier in her career that may have kind of set the foundation uh but like you know what it's like sometimes when you've been your career has been so long you can't even pinpoint where it started um, right. <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. you, 
you know, you can say it's any one thing, but really a lot of it is cumulative. So, you know, you yeah. take one bad bump, but it really could have been a bump 20 years ago. Um, and it's just interesting now that we've moved. So we're like, we're so sensitive about concussions and there's so much more knowledge and how, you know, you see these professional athletes being taken out for months. And I'm like, I think I've had so many concussions. <laughs> like, like. Dude. Pro Wrestling Noah, July 16, Nippon Budokan. Keiji Muto's chosen venue, the Nippon Budokan. The first fight of his retirement streak. The challenger, Supernova Kaito Kiyomiya. Don't miss Keiji Muto's retirement run. Noah. Keno challenges New Japan Pro Wrestling Satoshi Kojima for Noah Gold, the GHC Heavyweight Championship. And Ninja Mac is back! On top of that, Rob Van Dam in a hardcore rules match. International stream on Wrestle Universe.